Hi there, you're back with a single malt review as we sally forth into Campbellton once more. Yes, it is. It's um, Hazelburn special release time of year, mm. always a special time of year for Springbank fans. And uh, this time it's somewhat more traditional um, from the range that brought us the uh, sort of the Gaia Barolo and the Fino red wine cask and even, even something very close to home, a uh, New Zealand Pinot Noir cask matured Hazelburn. This one is very traditionally Oloroso cask matured. So it is a 100% sherry spring bank, which is something fairly exciting all on its own. Hmm. It's a 13 year old spirit, still 2003, bottled earlier this year. So a little over 13. Mm -hmm. But mixture of first fill and refill Oloroso casks. Yes, both hogsheads and maybe some butts mm. in the mix too. And a curious 41, sorry, 47.1% ABV. Yes, that is an odd strength. Um, mm. I suspect an artificial strength. I don't think uh, for 13 year old whiskey that it would have come down that far. Mm. So who knows exactly why that strength was chosen. Mm. Particularly, um, I think that might have been the point at which it might start to cloud up um, mm. at most shelf temperatures because it is, of course, like all um, Springbank whiskies, uncoloured and unchill filtered. Mm. So, got all the good stuff in there. But, um, lighter than some Springbank whiskies, because of course, like all Hazelburn, it's triple still mm. in the Irish style. Uh, ordinary Springbank is one and a half times distilled, uh, if you can get your mind around that. Uh, but all of Hazelburn gone through three whole times, so we'll be looking for a significantly lighter body than that usual spring bank. Lovely colour though, it's a sort of deep gold edging toward amber. Mm, yes it is. It's the colour that I associate with, if I see this colour and I know, you better look there, and I know that it's 100% sherry matured, then um, you can pretty much take for granted that it's nice sort of weathered refill casks. It's not going to be a huge sherry bomb from... Um, fresh sherry casks because that will be significantly significantly darker than that sort of think abuna levels mm. of um, dark sherry explosions there so this one should be nice and balanced and middle of the road yeah, yeah, with some fresh sherry. casks in there too I think we'll get a bit of variety mm. ah yes we should have a bit of bit of hopefully the best from both worlds mm. in this one Mm. So, a lighter mm. style of Springbank it may be but Springbank it is unmistakably on the nose, they can't take that away Oh, that huge salty maritime mm. funk. It's Springbank is one of the very, very few whiskies, um, at least that I can, I wouldn't say instantly, I'm not that good at it, but typically have a sniff and say, I know where that was mm. distilled. Mm. And Springbank is one of the very, very easiest because it's a whiskey like no other, a distillery like no other as well, um, which makes it very, very easy to see or rather smell coming. Yeah, good lations of sea salt, mm. some salted butter. Then, though, all the jam and marmalade mm. you might expect from a heavy sherry. Yeah, influence. That's the, um, it's quite a sweet mm. and savoury experience at the same time. Sweet and savoury, but not at all particularly sour. Um, the real tells for Springbank, in addition to their funkiness, are sort of a strawberry jam. And that's going more to the sort of berry jam, I think, side of things here. The strawberries are still... Mm. Strawberries are still there, sort of strawberry compote, um, strawberry nougat almost, is certainly representing, but there's more red fruits in there than you'd normally see in a no, spring No, but it's having more time to breathe, though. I'm starting to get some of those hints, some of the sort of less, um, well, less sweet, even less savoury mm. um, mm. sherry characters, like a little bit of a... A little bit of rubber, a little bit of plastic cement. There is, there is a bit of, of um, there's quite a lot of rubber. There's less sulfur, actually, mm. than I would have thought. Um, Certainly less than, say, Edredua, but... Yeah. There's a bit there, though, and it's coming through more as this warms up and aerates. It is. So we'll try it at mm. full strength, which is pretty stout at 47.1, yeah. but we'll see, see how we go. Mmm. Mm. And it's it's not too strong by any means. It's got quite a bit of fire to it, but it isn't too mm. sharp. It's on the warming side of fiery whiskey rather than the burning side. Yeah. That's, um, a, that's a thick and quite oily texture, but with quite a hot prickle to it. Mm. It's very, very dense, and without water, it's a lot drier than mm. you expect. And, and there's a lot of spice in there. Mm. 
and significantly, it's quite peaty to me as well. Hmm. Um, it should be less peaty than Springbank and certainly less peaty than Long Row. But um, compared to, say, your average mainland whiskey, I think there is quite quite an evident amount of peat yeah. there. I'm more than the peat. I'm getting mm. that the vulcanized mm. rubber that you get with some of the sherry casks. That's certainly mm. coming through. I think... Um, the reason we always see Hazelburn, this is a personal theory, so don't don't quote me on this one. Uh, the reason we always see the interesting Springbank finishes, or at least most of them, in Hazelburn, is because it's of all the Springbank whiskies, it's the least aggressively Springbank. I think a lot of finishes or maturations, in this case, this isn't a finish; this has been fully matured. Um, I think a lot of the more delicate things there, these different types of casks, would be a little bit bullied by the sheer force of character that you get in the other spring banks, particularly Long Row as well, because that's got peat along with everything else. Um, so I think that's why Hazelburn is the pick for interesting finishes, especially more delicate ones than Oloroso. I think because it's the lightest style they've got, it best wears the um, best wears the mantle of its finishes and its maturations mm -hmm. without overpowering. Now I've lightened that with a fair amount of water, and now there's some new aromas coming through. It's a bit like opening a, a can of uh, fruit salad. Mm. There's, it's a little bit metallic. There's some uh, some juice and some sweetness, and it's a little sort of difficult to say. It's sort of a, a heavy weight you get when you've had canned fruits in yeah. for a long time. It's certainly these. Uh, as I expected, the fruit has gotten a little riper, a little mm. fresher in here with the addition of water. But I see what you mean about yeah. the slightly strange metallic twang on it now. Yeah, it's, like it's almost tinned pears, peaches. There's a little bit of tin spoon, mm. if you know what that that particular flavour, mm. that slightly salty but distinctly metallic flavour to it. It's diminishing. I think that mm. was um, made briefly volatile by the addition of the water mm. and it's now burning off quite mm. quickly. So that was more of sort of a, a ghost of an aroma rather yeah. than so more of a anything else. Syrup. Let's yeah. see what it's done to the palate though. Mm. Oh, that's brought out a lot more sweetness. Yeah, I think before. that has that has distinctly improved it. Yeah, it's, it's cut now right through that rubber and uh, sulfur. Yeah, it's now much less of a of a head scratcher in terms mm. of what it's bringing. That's made the peat subside a lot, the fire subside altogether, I think, and the fruit has just exploded out of that. There's strawberry jam, mm. a few other types of jam in there as well. There's a little bit of raspberry, a tiny bit of blackberry in there almost, and I almost never ever get that. That's normally more constrained to red wine, these sort of blackcurrant blackberry flavours, but mm. there's a wee bit in there almost. That's really, really quite transformed mm. it for the better, I think. It's not super sweet mm. though. It's got all those sweet fruit flavours mm. without the intense sugary that you might expect from them. Yeah, that's... If I was going to have it one way or the other, I would go mm. water every time with this one. It's a quite transformatively better mm. whiskey, so that's, that's how I'll be scoring mine. Um, it is four scores with this mm. one. Spring drink's always a bit tricky because it's always you almost you know we have a we have a rum scores and a blend scores and a and a malt scores. You almost need a spring bank score because it does things so very differently. It's quite hard to relate it back to all the other malt whiskies, uh, which I'll do anyway. But take it take it with a grain of salt because I do struggle, admittedly, trying to stand this up against other things. But um, going back to the old default of exactly how much I enjoy this, mm. which is. Mm. Really, really quite a lot. This one's a fairly effortless 89 for mm. me. What do you think? Mm. Oh, I like this too, only it's got a few things which aren't necessarily ticking all my boxes. I like that it's fruity, but I usually like my fruitiness to go along with some sweetness, which is on par for those particular fruit. In this case, you've got some of a fruit flavour, but without the natural sweetness you'd like to go with that, that's pushing it a bit down for me. If it's going to be less sweet, I'd like to be able to stand out more in those more savory or sour or other other avenues. That aside though, this is a really good, very heavily sherried whiskey. It's dry, spicy, a bit fruity, and it gets an 82. Well there you go. I think as Dave's um, as Dave's appraisal there proves, um, you can you can tweak a Springbank whiskey in a lot of ways, but you can't stop it being Springbank. And if that's going to get in the way of your enjoyment of it, um, then that's that's going to be a problem. Certainly, 
Um, like we say for all Springbank whiskies, even the milder species here in the Hazelburn, not a beginner's whisky by any means. It's a very, very particular, very, very odd thing there, and it will not be disguised by um, finishes or mm. special maturations such in this one. So know, know what you're in for. But if you are in for a Springbank experience, I think this is a really, really excellent one to go for. And assuming the price I got it for is indicative of things worldwide, it's kind of a steal at the moment. Mm considering Springbank can get a wee bit pricey, this one was not at all. So jump on that one if you think that's a uh, something you want, uh, because it says, uh, it even says here, one of 12,000 bottles, which isn't a great deal for the worldwide market, so you need to get in quick if you want it, but it should be on shelves now, as they say. So have we look if that thinks you, uh, tickles your fancy. But in the meantime, <laughs> we'll tickle you with something a wee bit different later on. We've got a good lineup of things mm. today, including another new release, which I think you'll be quite excited to see. Something from the venerable Ard Big. So stick around for that one, and we will be right back. Slanger, keep safe.